Hey Pam, how are you? I forgot my microphone was probably on. Hello. I'm just hanging out, working on my crafts. Finally. <laughs> how are you today, Pam? Just trimmed a bottle brush tree. I've never done that before, and the little ends went all over the place. Oh, you're good. Oh, that's good. It's that's really good. So I just trimmed this little bottle brush tree on the side, kind of making a flat back to it so that I could stick it on my ornament that I'm making. And then I have a box of jewelry to unpack. I've been kind of holding on to it. For a little while i'll probably wait for a few minutes before i open that up completely hi danielle how are you nice to see you i'm doing a little crafting i'm just hanging out if anyone wants to just chat you can do that too how's the How's the day treating you, Danielle? So I have this little bottle brush tree that I just trimmed the back of so I can squeeze it in by the deer because I thought the deer needed a little something. And now, of course, I have to put something at the bottom here to cover up the <laughs> bare spot. So I'll have to add some more. I'm kind of realizing I'm, I'm a more is more kind of person. You know, just keep adding. So, as you can see by my background, there's a lot of more. There's more going on. So three oh six. Yeah, it's only noon here. So, I'm kind of just getting going. Although I will say I got up a little earlier than I usually do these days. In the winter, especially, it's hard for me to get up very early. But um, three or sorry, eight. AM, I was up, I was proud of myself. 
and got on to see a couple of my friends on YouTube and got inspired. Did a little laundry. So thought, well, I'll get on here and see if any of my friends want to chat. Hi, Kathy. How are you? How's it going? Okay. 46. Yeah, when it gets into the 40s, that's, that's pretty chilly. And then last week we had um, we had freezing temps and had a little bit of um, snow on the ground. And actually some of it's still there. Some of the snow on, because um, it hasn't been too sunny to melt it off. And it's only been probably around 40, something like that. Um, I'm good. I had a um, post-op visit yesterday and it's been um, Friday. It'll be three weeks from my uh, abdominal uh, hernia repair take two. And um, she said everything's looking really good. There's some scar tissue that is uh, kind of giving me problems, but um, that's because it's take two. Um, and I guess there's some kind of bladder thing that can happen. And I think that it's happening with me. Um, I'll have to kind of keep an eye on that, but, uh, I mean, nothing, nothing that I think is serious, just sort of a nerve, um, sensation thing, which hopefully it won't be forever. Um, so yeah, things are going really good and, and I haven't had to take anything except Tylenol since, um, since actually the day after I came home. So that's been good and kind of surprising, um, but there's still a little discomfort and there's um, definitely, uh, I can't lift anything over 15 pounds. She up upgraded me from 10 to 15. And then I said, well, my 17 pound cat might um, be sad about that. And she said, well, I'll, I'll give the exception just for the 17 pound cat, but nothing else. <laughs> so I don't have to lift him up too often, but he does um, find his way to my lap quite a, quite a bit. So, um, as long as I don't lift him, I'm good. <laughs> anyway, I think that's funny. So I'm crafting. I have a little ornament that I've been making. I've been making these little um, tart tin ornaments, these little baking tart tins that um, these happen to be stamped Sweden. So these are made in Sweden, but um, there are, uh, yeah, they, you know, you can use them for whatever. These happen to have had a little bit of little rusty spots on them. Not too bad, but right there, there's like a little rusty spot, which I think adds charm to the whole thing overall. There is the work in progress. Of course, I love the glitter. I love adding little bits and doodads. I did do, um, I had intended to just use like found objects and leftover jewelry pieces. So this was a an earring um, piece that kind of bugs me that it goes sideways, so I don't know what I'm going to do. But um, found objects and pieces like this. So like all those little things in there. And that's the back. And sometimes I like to finish the back, depending. This one has a lot going on already. But what I mean by that is like this to, just to hide where I put the little hanger. So this has like a bow and a, a thing. And then this has this, I had a Trafari earring, this drop earring that's a clip on that didn't have a match. And it had, it was on an old Trafari clear tag. And so what I did was I attached it, lost my focus there. I attached it to the bottom there of this and um, I cut out the Trafari See if I get cut there, cut out the trafari and um, put it on there. And then this, you, I took the back that had that was missing the dangle, and I kind of put it backwards so you can read the trafari um, thing right there. It's kind of hard for me to do that because I hate to. Um, thank you. I hate to. You know, when there's a one earring and you think, I'm going to find the other one, but there was no way I could find this, the other one of this. So I thought, why not put it to good use? And then these can be um, Christmas ornaments, or this one is actually 
not necessarily Christmas related, so you could you could hang it wherever you wanted. Um, but I've been making um, a lot of Christmas ornaments out of um, just found objects and little bits that I have around. So, in fact, I've made um, a couple bracelets that I'll probably show in my live tomorrow for sale out of these um, just um, clip-on earrings, um, especially one-offs that I have. So this one, this one again was hard for me to um, commit to the crafting realm because it is um, one of those Millefiori, sorry about the focus. I'm working on this with the camera. The Millefiori. Little bitty tiles in there. And on the back it says it's stamped Italy. And, um, but it was a single clip on. Again, had it for a long time. Came from my mom's jewelry box. She'd probably been holding on to it for a while too. And so um, I finally decided, you know, it's wearable now. And kind of, I love these kind of eclectic pieces like this. And you'd think this would be pretty heavy, but it's not too bad. Not too bad at all. So yeah, these couple bracelets will be offered at some point. But yeah, I have a fun, fun jewelry box here, a box of jewelry from Crack and Christine. Um, just ten dollars. I was, I mean, it was an offer up, and I was able to get it, and it was such a good deal considering everything that's in here. Um, and you know, I can repurpose a lot of it. So there's this really pretty bracelet. It's seed beads, and it's just on memory wire. But it's really nicely done. Fits me. Usually, cuff bracelets aren't very comfortable for me, like this one. I don't know. Let me try it on. Not too bad. Looks like a Wonder Woman kind of thing. <laughs> Wonder Woman. It's a lot of really fun stuff in here. I'm excited to go through it. And I'd been holding on to it since before my surgery. So, um, hi, Bonnie, honey. How are you? Good to see you. Thanks for coming by, friends. I really appreciate it. And, you know, pop in and out if you want. I don't know what else is going on on um, any of our other friends are on YouTube right now. Have I not looked? So, just chilling out as promised because I keep saying one of these days I'm going to get on here. So, this looks like it's missing a little uh, cabochon, which I can easily replace. And uh, don't, I mean, not to mention a couple strands of something else which again, I could replace if I wanted to. Um, do I want to? I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> Let me see what kind of feel this has once you put it on, okay. That's kind of neat, it's kind of a choker style. At least on me it is, so that's kind of fun. Feels good, those beads feel really nice. So let's go through this. This is really neat too. I'll be putting on all this jewelry this whole way through. It's a stretchy bracelet that has some really nice beads on it. Let's see if I get this close. Does it focus? This also helps me um, practice with my camera. Yeah, that's pretty. And it fits me. So I like that. I look like the for any things with jewelry. This is really neat too. This looks like something you might buy for a costume or for every day, who knows? It's very cool. This kind of flips around, so maybe it needs a little help. It's lightweight, so it's probably not a super big deal. This I had saw, I, I saw in my little box um, and kind of played with it a little bit. Um, rather than going, I haven't been through the entire box yet, but this is really neat. It kind of reminds me of peas. They're definitely um, natural stone. Those are neat. Set aside the things. If Marcy comes by, I think Marcy asked me for this, um, when we were both 
in the chat when Christine was selling this box and um, ask Marcy if she still is interested in this little compact mirror. And if, sometimes I know I talk a little quietly. If I'm um, speaking too quietly for you to hear, please do let me know. Okay, these are neat earrings. I bet I can um, either repair or, you know, repurpose these. Those are neat, especially for Christmas items or for Christmas ornaments. I just, I've never bought a box of, um, jewelry like this and it's just I always thought it would be so fun to go through and it is it's definitely fun this is neat it's some kind of glass that's been wire wrapped which I've done quite a bit of before hi Kathy how are you dear thanks for coming in and saying hello I'm just doing a little unboxing of this mystery box of jewelry that I got from Crack and Christine. And I'm doing a little crafting too. So there's lots of fun goodies in here. I've been um, looking forward to this box so much. And I have been using what I have for um, some kind of found object ornaments like this one. So I use the tins. Oh, I might have to get a sweatshirt, you guys. I'm getting a little chilly. Excuse me for just a second while I get the sweatshirt. My little sweater. I don't know why I still call them sweatshirts. It's not very um, grown up or appealing. Is it a sweater makes more sense? <laughs> oh, but everyone calls, a lot of people call them hoodies too. Whew. My arms are getting chilly. I hope I'm not get, catching what all the other people that live here in my house have had. Everybody has had a cold except me. And when I say everybody, I mean all four of John's kids who are here half time. And um, yeah, the Bretts too, that's true. Um, yeah, all four of John's kids. And now John is sick. He's not doing too bad, but he does get super, super congested. So, um, Cause he has allergies anyway. He's the allergy boy. Do you mean these Bretts, Pam? These? I still have not um, decided how I'm going to go about selling these, but I guess if anybody was interested, I was going to sell them for $3 each. They're really, really pretty, but there's a lot to look at here, so I don't know. Yeah, exactly. I don't want that. I don't want to get sick. So like last week when I heard the younger kids were sick, because it started with the 12-year-old, um, one of the 12-year-old boys. He has twin boys who are 12. Um, I was like, no, but I was, um, able to stay away and like never saw them the whole week. And, and then the old, one of the 15, the 15 year old girl got it, a uh, daughter. And then, um, now this week, the 17 year old daughter has it <laughs> and is staying away from her. She's with us most of the time. The other three are like with, at the ranch right now. So yeah, I told John away from me but I figured the damage was probably already done by the time we knew he was sick you know that kind of thing it's, it's I'm sure I've already been exposed so here's a little uh, doodad that I can add to something it's a very long long chain that's in there what else do we have tell me about um anybody that 
is doing some fun holiday um, events in your area. I'd love to hear about that. And um, yeah, yeah, exactly. The sneezing. <laughs> Yeah, um, the first week that hurt a lot, um, and even and laughing too, although it's better than sneezing and coughing, uh, because at least it improves the mood. But um, yeah, that, it's not too bad right now if I have to cough or something, but I certainly wouldn't want to have to cough really hard. So if anybody knows anybody with the last name Foley, I would gift this to you. It's a key ring. And what else do we have in here? Show that, show that. This, not sure what, oh, it's a brooch. Hi, James, how are you? Not sure I have met you before. Thanks for the thumbs up. Every little bit helps. I guess that's a brooch of some kind. It looks like there's another one new in the package too. Those could be great for crafting as well because I'm not sure I'd wear that as a brooch. I'm not that eclectic, I guess. Oh, this is pretty, you guys. Look at this. This is pretty. I don't think it's like super fancy quality or anything, but it certainly is pretty. I'll look for a maker here. Let's see. No. Don't see one. Don't see one. Yeah, Kathy, I don't know if you were here when I was saying I had a, a follow-up appointment yesterday. Everything was great. Um, there's some scar tissue hanging out in certain spots after, um, you know, this being the second repair. Um, oh, having, <laughs> speaking of problems, I'm having like, it's back spasmy thing. Oh, you know what these are? These are wine um, or glass, wine glass charms, probably from a baby shower because they all look baby related. There's one from, uh, that's a high chair. This one's a high chair with a baby in it. <laughs> and then, um, there he is. Then the little crib with the baby and then little feet prints. Those are cute little charms. Maybe I can use. Um, yeah, there's some costume jewelry in here, which is really fun. It's another stretchy bracelet. Thanks for coming in and giving me the thumb. Appreciate it. I'm hoping to do more little crafty things. Um, there's another. bracelet or something that's a uh, rosary style. Oop. I love this. If you haven't visited Crack and Christine's channel, you need to because she has some really cool stuff. Here's another key ring, key chain. Terrapins, swim team, far western long course, Concord, California, August 2001, championships. So some swim team went to the championships and they got some keychains made. <laughs> Don't know if I'll actually be able to use that, but that's okay. Plenty in here. Loose beads, single earrings, love single earrings to do things with. Ooh, there's a nice cabochon that would be for a little, you know, doodad for an ornament. So actually, I'm going to pause on the unboxing the jewelry and I'll go back to working on my ornament a little bit. I miss it already. Let's see, what can I put at the bottom of that tree? First, let's glue it in. 
I like to use the A6000. Anybody else like to use that? Hey, Georgia, how are you? Doing a little crafting and unboxing of um, this jewelry um, mystery box that I got from Kathy and Christine. It even has a uh, little watch face in it. Those are fun to craft with. I have more of those in my, my personal stash, too. Ooh, what a fun pendant. So anyway, I'm doing a little crafting. I'm about to glue the tree onto this little deer ornament I'm working on. I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna find something to put at its base. Maybe I'll have to do that first. Maybe a bead. bead would look nice at the bottom of that. Smaller. Like put the little trunk into the bead and then glue it on. That way you're not looking at a bear trunk. height too. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Yes, yes, yes. What are you up to today, Georgia? So I'm going to use this bead at the bottom and have the little tree go in it. I took a wooden bottom off. Oh, why am I having that weird pain? <laughs> That's weird. Anyway, I'm sure I'm fine. It's not a big deal. Just random spasms, I think. I do have a little binder for support on right now. Can't stay horizontal my whole life, even though I do enjoy it. <laughs> I like the laying down. Laying down is fun. There's things to do, you know? Okay. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing because my camera is a little far, but I think that's enough glue. Let me see. I'll wiggle it around and see. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably. <laughs> Do you see me with any ventilation? No. But um oh, I should put that upside down. I'm gonna turn this around. This bead has a wider um, end, and I'm going to put the wider end towards the top. See if I can squeeze it in a little bit nicer there. Yeah, the E6000 is um, is a little smelly, but um, just like with Sharpies, it's, it's sort of like that. Okay, well, you, I figure I lost a lot of brain cells already. What's a few more? Right, but, <laughs> You're right. I'll go turn on the fan in the room. That'll help. That's a pretty big room with high ceilings. So I should be okay. All right. So there we go. That, that fits a tiny bit better. Let me see if I get it lower. There. I guess that's good. Now I still have a space that I want to fill. Put the tree and the bead. Has the bead too much? Maybe a smaller one would be better. I could sneak it out. I was moving things around after I put the glue in. Let's see. Here's a neat bead that's uh, hematite, I think. Feels heavy and cool hematite. And that would be great as a wooden bead that would. Um, Nice. That was just a little plastic one. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's fun just putting together, you know, something you like the look of and it doesn't have to, that just sort of organically happens. That's how I do most of my crafting. Um, where would a wooden bead be? minutes until it stops. Oh, you know what would work really nice if I had a little tiny ornament. Yeah, I don't know 
kind of like the look of the bead. I'm going to take it off. Not so sure. You know, there's glue on the tree, but I can still move it around. That's fine. I'll put the bead right there. Kind of a messy crafter, too. Um, that's fine. I hate to take this apart, but I think I'm going to. Um, I'm not going to wear it as a necklace anyway, so let's get some little beads out. Dark brown or cream. Cream. Yeah, it's high viscosity, vapor harmful. Hmm. I never really thought about it before. Hi, Amy. How are you? We are crafting today. Finally. I mean, I've done some uh, the last few days, but not on camera. So I decided to come on to see my friends too, because I feel a little lonely most of the time. Yeah, you know, I was supposed to have another uh, earth counselor appointment with a new therapist today. And it's through this thing called Mindful Therapy Group. And it's kind of like those search, those um, places like BetterHelp where, but they take your insurance. BetterHelp, I don't think, takes insurance. And um, anyway, so I, I had uh, looked for a new person because my other one moved and um, we had other issues and so I messed up because they were supposed to um yes okay Bonnie we're supposed to um have an appointment today at 11 and I messed up because I didn't fill out the paperwork for her um that you're supposed to do prior to your appointment I just sort of thought well gosh I I've seen somebody else there before don't they have all my info and and I just blew it off, and then she's like, I got a message from her today. Well, to reschedule because you didn't fill out the paperwork. And I was like, okay, that's fine. I'm sorry to waste your time, and we can reschedule. We were scheduled for next week, so I'll fill out that paperwork. I guess to me, you know, you tell your story, just like with seeing a new doctor. Here, I'm actually putting the glue in my nose. Sorry. You didn't see that, Bonnie. Turned on the fan. Um, uh, you know, you, you see a new doctor and you have to like give them your entire life history again. That gets tedious after a while. Um, I don't know about you, but yeah. So this uh, I wanted to show off too. I was going to do some show and tell. And if you want to see any of the Little things I have behind me, <laughs> your ball was, you're always commenting on. Um, let me know. But this is a cute little pendant that Mary from Ancestral Beginnings made. It has a little little guy on it with a Santa hat with a screen, and it says "nice" and there's polka dots in the back. So it's made out of a Scrabble tile. Mary is really a um, wonderful crafter, and I enjoy her items so much. So let's see if there's another little something I can tuck in there. Oh, here's another one of those little charms that has a birth certificate on it. It says, welcome sweet baby on one side. And it's like a birth certificate on the other. There it is. Maybe I'll take all those charms and make a bracelet and somebody could um, get it for some unexpected on their baby or make this this ornament out of it. Do that. What's this? It's a neat necklace. This is my box of jewelry that I got from Cracking Christine. Neat. It's a nice long necklace. I've been meaning to try wearing longer necklaces. 
Is that an older lady thing? I don't know. I feel like I am now. So what's up, Amy, if you're still here? How are you? Staying warm in your neck of the woods in Ohio? Yeah, I know. Me too. Me too. I'm still buying because I'm uh, I got a lot of stockings to fill this year. So oh, fighting a cold. Yeah, I was telling everyone that it's going through our house and um, John's kids who are here half time. You know, kids are germ factories, I swear. And um, yeah, hopefully he's not listening and hearing me complain. Um, <laughs> So we feel bad. And I'm using some E6000 and was reminded to ventilate. Thank you, Bonnie. That's probably why I'm <laughs> going a little cuckoo. With all the glue fumes and stuff. So has anyone ever given you a jar of little things like this? I um, had this forever. I think my aunt picked it up at like a church bazaar or something. It's a great idea if you have odds and ends that you don't know what to do with. And you um, maybe you have some of these small jars. So I hope you feel better, Amy. It's, um, it's a bummer. And of, of course, everyone has to worry and take COVID tests and stuff if you're, you know, if you have compromised individuals around, you probably want to no, so you know how careful you have to be. And now John's daughter stayed home from school today because she wasn't feeling good. And I can hear her coughing from the other room. <laughs> oh, yeah, they should. I agree. They totally should. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure... One of his daughters still does at school, but um, I'm not sure about the boys. I'd be surprised if the boys did. And they live in a more, I hate to say it, just a more conservative, anti-vax kind of area that is different from where I live and what I believe in. So. I'm much more um, mask uh, comfortable, I guess. And uh, so are my kids who, um, one goes to University of Washington and she's a uh, grad student. She's a PhD student and she teaches and she, she and her partner wear masks all the time, even when they come over here. And, um, yeah, I don't know if that will ever stop, honestly. Um, and neither one of them have like significant health issues. They're just like that. Plus my dad is, does have compromised health and is elderly and I go and see him pretty frequently to supply him with what he needs and I don't want to expose him. So anyway, hope you um, are all being safe and healthy out there. And Amy, I hope you're feeling better soon with your cold. I know some people can't or won't get the vaccine for their own reasons, and that's fine. Also, flu vaccines, I know some people are resistant to that. Um, so I got mine, and I'm glad. You know what? I'm going to paint that bead gold, feeling like that this bead down here needs some gold. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to open my gold. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Antique mom. I'm, I'm so, um, I so want to come over and see your spot or spots. I think you said you have multiple spots. Good. Good. Glad. Um, wasn't intending to go on a big rant there. Yeah. Um, I had some bigger things at the, at my parents' house that I was considering, um, starting a, a vintage booth, antique booth, to, in order to sell some vintage end tables and things like that. And I decided 
uh, especially with my impending surgeries. I had one last November as well on my abdomen. Um, and then one just this month, last month now, November 18th is when it was. Um, that I was not in a position to, to take that on. And I was in a hurry to sell my parents' house um, just because um, it would have been a whole different since I have power of attorney with my dad and, you know, my mom passed away last year and it would be a whole different scenario if he passed and, um, you know, probate and stuff like that. Um, although I am an only child, so I think that simplifies, um, things once people pass away, but being able to sell it while he's still around and, um, I could sign the papers and do all this stuff. And then get that money in his account so he can use it for um, his continued living expenses and assisted living and all that. So, yeah, I like the look of that better now that I painted it gold. And now I feel like there's still a space. I need to ground this by putting something in that little space. I'm not sure what. I was thinking of this little white pom-pom, but I think I can do better. So that is where we are with this guy right now. I was hoping to get a lot more deer for pretty inexpensive, and I wasn't able to find um, block more of the background there. There we go. And then I went away. There we go. So under that little ball, I want to put something else so it doesn't look like it's floating. So I decided to pay a clean out um, company run by veterans, supporting veterans, of course, and labor, uh, their, their labor, she hires veterans to clean out my parents' house. And they quoted me five to $7,000, which I thought was a ton of money um, for the job, but I was willing to you know, pay it out of my dad's sale of proceeds. Oh, thanks, Amy. And then, um, and then as we went along, I included two vehicles. There was a 20 year old minivan and a 15 year old pop-up camper trailer and that I was going to sell myself. And again, I just decided, you know, I'm still grieving so much. I'm trying to do these other things and still have health issues. I'm going to add those to, cause he's, the company does those as well. And they auction off what they can from the house and they auction off the vehicles and then take that out, um, subtract that, those proceeds from what you owe them. Well, then I got the invoice and it was over $10,000. It was $10,000, 10200 And I was like, is that with the proceeds and everything? He's like, yeah, I really underestimated the labor for cleaning out the house. And what can you do? It is what it is, right? The price of everything is high. Um, you know, they, I, you know, they, I know, I knew that they weren't going to be able to sell a lot of what I had for very much, especially since they do online auctions and you can get really good stuff for really cheap there. I know a lot of resellers that do purchase from that kind of thing, um, as well as estate sales and I tried to take as much as I could from the house that I could sell myself because I could get a lot more on eBay. And um, if I'm will, if you're willing to hold on to it for a little while, but of course they're ready to let it go fast, right? Because they have a lot of clients and a lot of houses to clean out. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so you know, I I gladly wrote the check and um, you know, out of the proceeds of the sale of the house, which are modest anyway, since it was as is and a fixer upper. Um, so, uh, but it was worth it. I, you know, first of all, to pay for those veterans to have some work. Um, the ones that, you know, need some extra work, probably they have a regular job during the weekend work weekends for this company just to make ends meet is what I imagine. And then, um, and then just to, you know, have the peace of mind and get it done and get, I was able to get the house on the market in September of this year and get it sold 
quickly. And so, um, yeah, to definitely. Thank you, Amy. It is very much. That's, yeah. I appreciate you guys listening because I do, um, I do talk about these things sometimes. I don't want to take up a lot of time on lives to, to do that, but I do feel like it's something that, um, you know, I started watching YouTube lives because I was lonely and going through a lot of stuff and decision making and um, losing people. And um, it really helped me. So I was inspired to, as I'm still working on things, but kind of coming out of it, seeing the, the end of the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, you know, just wanting to share you know, with other people that might also be going through similar things. Um, like I was when I started watching YouTube, I had not, you know, I had seen YouTube live little clips here and there where when people would send them to me because they thought it was interesting or whatever, but I was not watching it consistently until I, during the pandemic started watching, needing to get my mind off things. Um, and then also I, I started watching vintage um, resellers because I wanted to see how much things were going for what the market was for different collectibles since I was trying to sell things from my parents' house. So um, I learned so much from them um, and I still do. So here's another one I made in case you didn't see it earlier. It's a little crooked. It's a um, what looks like a Italian or yeah, I think it's Italian made uh, lamp work bead. Just a single earring and some kind of glass bead here. So I decided to put it on this. I don't know, do you guys mind that it goes sideways? That kind of, kind of bugs me, but I, could, I should be able to fix that. It's on a flexible beading wire. So that's why you see me bend it and then it goes right back. It's just, um, it just must have been bent to the side. Anyway, I hate to get rid of a lamp work bead just because it has no match to it. Focus on there. There it is. That's a pretty little glass work bead. And here's the other one. This has a Trafari earring, a lone Trafari earring on it. And sort of a uh, vintage equestrian type lady actually stole this image from a postcard that I have that was likely, that is um, sort of a business card for Catherine Young, the great cre YouTube creator, vintage lover. Um, so I had a postcard from her. I took a few of the images that she had and um, repurpose them for this, not copying them, um, just using the item I had. So there's that. I put this little bead here and it hasn't, I haven't glued it in yet, but I'm thinking about just having that little bead there. And then I want to cover the stem here of this little pearl. So I want to cover that with something decided what and then I think I might be done with this one and then I have I'll go ahead and show you you did oh I'd love to see them I haven't uh, this is as far as the sunblashes go as far as I've gone I haven't done any in like um, baskets or cups or anything like that but I want to this is a um, oh yeah Yes, Bonnie, you know, yes, you know what it's, what it's like. Um, even though we're not necessarily alone, we're still feeling alone because of those losses. Um, it can be really overwhelming when you're kind of just stuck in those thoughts all the time. This is a pin that I got from um, Joni in BC in one of her... Um, crafting lots. 
and it's just missing the pin, which I could replace. I could replace that pin quite easily, just make it out of wire. But I decided I would use it in one of these guys and have it just sort of be um, on the outside there and then have that little gem that I put in there on the inside. And that could be a pretty ornament. Oh, you did sell. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. I, yeah, I decided I was going to um, keep crafting these until I run out of stuff, um, which I might not, not ever run out of stuff, but knowing myself. Um, and then there's a, a cat animal rescue um, focused on cats nearby that has a craft bazaar every year, and I just missed it last weekend. But I, I decided I was going to keep crafting these and take these as well as my, my mom had left over in these bins, so a lot of crocheted pieces, hats and scarves and stuff. And I know I can donate them, um, but um, I know there's also a lot of textiles out there that are being donated. But I thought I'd first try to sell them um, to benefit the cat rescue. So I'm going to keep crafting all year long and put those aside for um, a couple for my live sales and then a couple for um, the cat rescue. So I'm excited about that, just to have that goal in mind. And who knows, I might, you know, if I'm feeling better, my dad doesn't need quite as much supervision. Um, maybe I can get a little part-time job that's other than dog sitting, of course. Thank God your son was yeah. Yes, yes, Bonnie, I remember you saying that. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Wow. Wow. You must love seeing the difference, him gaining weight and not using the oxygen. That's just amazing. Any amount of, you know, bonus time that you didn't maybe didn't think you were going to get at first, you know, when you first heard the diagnosis, it's great. Yeah. I know you, I remember you said that. That's just amazing that, um, that he's had a turnaround. That's wonderful. And, and I remember thinking after you mentioned that, um, you know, it, there used to be not that long ago, not a lot of hope. Um, and I think, you know, we don't have a cure, of course, and cancer is all over the place with its causes and its effects, but, um, it does, uh, give me hope that maybe some of the treatments that are being developed are actually doing some good. It sounds like it from what you're saying. I'm happy to hear that. I'm glad that you're sharing with us. Oh, I'm in top chat, not live chat. Why does that even, shouldn't even matter? What, it, what would somebody need to use Top Chat for? Can you let me know if you know? And we always talk about, we should be using live chat. Why is that? I don't think I know. So, um, oh, Kishruta, okay, yeah. I definitely see that on TV. And I kind of wonder a lot about those different yeah, that's great. I wonder a lot about some of those <laughs> advertising treatments. Um, if they're really out there working or if it's just the, they're still just pushing it um, for marketing. I'm glad to hear that. I know Jardiance, I think Jardiance is a treatment for, um, it's not the one for, I was going to say the diabetic, the one for diabetes, but it could be another one that starts with a J my mom, that my mom tried. And I guess it has a big side effect of like bladder infections and stuff. And that's why she had to stop taking it because of that bladder infections. Well, this is a neat necklace that was in the bonus or the, the jewelry box. Oh, you'll go Google it. Thank you. That's what John does too. Whenever I ask him a question. <laughs> So he has to get IV tea true to how often, what's the dose? I mean, you know, how often does he have to get the IV? And does he have a port that just stays in? 
or um, does he have to get stuck each time he has the IV? Just curious because I have issues with IVs. Um, I have to take something to relax or lay down and have a cold cloth on my head because I just get, um, I don't freak out visibly. I just have internally, I have a little bit of um, anxiety over it. And so I've, I've been known to pass out when I get IVs. So it would be a hard thing. Three weeks. Okay. That's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah. That's not too bad. Yeah, I just, I, I don't know if they do them in other people in different places, but they always do it in my hand right here. It's always so uncomfortable, the little straw that they leave in. It, I, I don't know. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. So it's a, it's a chemo um, replacement, basically. That's exciting. Oh, I'm so glad for you. Top chat filters potential spam. Oh. Yeah. Why wouldn't we use it? Hi, Sammy. How are you? Hi, Beth. Thank you. Yeah, we're just chilling out and chatting a little bit. I have a mystery box that I... I've been going through a little jewelry box and actually I've used a few pieces already and put one on. Uh, these are neat. This looks like a, it's like a, just a little choker kind of thing, but I can use those pieces. Yeah. How are you doing, Sim? Can you give us a, an update on your, how you're feeling? I know you've been under the weather. So, oh, it's a stretchy one. It's neat. Do you ever have that? You crafters out there have that inner struggle where you see um, you prefer your hand. Yeah, that's, I think, why they do it with me. Um, it's harder. Although when I get a blood draw, they always do it here. But um, I think also when you're in for surgery and you're going to be in the hospital for a couple of days, they might like it in the hand better because they get to it easier. And also you're not like bumping it around too much. But um, I just. Uh, makes me anxious just thinking about it right now. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. All right, thank you for giving me a description that helps me remember. Oh, I'm so glad. I love hearing about that, Beth. That's so great. So I was going to say, do you ever have an inner struggle where, you know, you have a, a intact piece here but you could disassemble it and use the parts for um, crafting. But I'm like, but it's, there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> yeah. No, yes. Yes. For now. Yes. Well, you know, I don't know if you caught this, but in September um, I had the surgery scheduled, but, uh, but at the laparoscopic version with a different surgeon and I went in for that and did the IV and went under and he got in there and, um, he couldn't do it because it was too big. So, um, so I was like, okay, to so go to this other surgeon and, and, uh, you know, I had, I had seen him before because he did the original repair six years ago. Yeah. You remember the whole thing. <laughs> Sorry. I do share a lot. So, um, yeah, it's a story. So anyway, it's, it's fixed really well right now and I hope it'll stay that way. It could just be that with me and my body type and everything that the, the original laparoscopic repair that I had six years ago just wasn't going to hold anyway. And I did, I was working full time as an esthetician and probably pushing myself a little harder than I should have right after surgery. But um, try not to blame myself too much. It's past. But you know how that goes. All right. Should I shove that little, I don't know. So I put the little, I'll oh, see. I'm just, you know, I should be all good now. That's what John keeps saying. He says, you, 
You're all good. Because in the time I had, in the time between the first, so I had, in 2015, I had an emergency. Um, intestinal blockage removal. I had intestinal blockage. It was just my anatomy. She said, the surgeon said, I had too much intestine, too long, and there's too much space in there and something, it just kind of twisted on itself. And so I obviously had to have emergency surgery. There was no other option. So they, they did an incision, you know, right down the belly button and um, about eight or nine inches long. And it just, within a year, it just, it was obvious that it had herniated. It wasn't, it didn't hold. So they had that first repair done then. And then um, that didn't hold either. So, and then the t in the time that it took me to get around to having that repair done, I had two knee replacements because my knees were um, killing me. The, the um, the arthritis, osteoarthritis was getting so bad in both that I just had to. And so I did that instead of just getting her hernia repaired because those were on the list. I also had Achilles tendon tear before that. Yeah, so I've had a lot of uh, surgeries in the last six years. So, um, yes, yes. Good. I'm glad you got a new doctor for that. Yeah. I know you had pneumonia and you've been struggling. So glad that you are finding some help. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah, Amy. You know, I turned 52 this year. I'm going to, or this, this current year. And people would say, oh, you're too young to have two knee replacements. And I'd be like, yeah, but I would um, not be able to walk if I didn't. Like, am I supposed to just wait until I'm 80 to have knee replacements? Because somebody said, well, the replacements will wear out in 20 years. It used to be fewer years. I think that they're saying that the replacements now um, last a little bit longer. No, I haven't. I had the first one in 2018 and I had the second one in 2019. And, um, yeah, yeah. Um, they're saying that, you know, I was like, is it me? Did I do it to myself? And they do call it overuse, um, the osteo earlier osteoarthritis. But um, they say to the anatomy that you have your, yeah, some exactly losing weight will help, but it's not, obviously it's not going to fix your knees. So um, that just takes a little bit. It helps, yeah, you know. So, um even after I had lost weight, it, it almost got worse in some ways. I don't want to like change your mind about that, but <laughs> um, it almost got worse after I lost weight. I don't know if I was just using my legs more or not, but you know, I just, it's worth, I totally um, recommend if you find a surgeon that you're comfortable with, do the knee surgery because you, I am totally different. John knows me before and after the knee surgeries. And he says that I can go upstairs and I, don't, I walk differently. Um, yeah. And that, you know, I have too much life to live to not be able to move around without pain. My knees do not hurt anymore. And they hurt constantly before. Um, so my knees don't hurt. Occasionally, yeah, Sammy, I do um, on my right knee, and I think it healed differently because it's the right and you use it to drive. So I didn't get as much rest post op, but also knees are different. So hardly ever do you have the same recovery for one as you do with the other. And then the second knee was the right knee. And um, so it's the most recent. And occasionally I have what I think are just tendon types of aches on that side. The left knee, I don't have any problems with and never have to like rub anything on it. But on, on the right knee, I do rub it, but it's nothing like the pain that I had with um, actual arthritis. Nothing like that. So I, um, I say do it. Do it. If you have a surgeon that is confident that 
doing it now is right for you, I would do it because that's, um, it was definitely right for me. So my ankles are good. I've always had strong ankles. I did have a, um, Achilles tendon tear that was almost full. It was still connected, but like 50% was torn, um, prior to my first knee surgery. But, um, I think that wouldn't have happened if I didn't have arthritic, arthritic knees. So I had that happen. I had to have that repaired. And then I had the, um, the knee surgery, the surgeon I had already met with prior to the, the Achilles tendon repair, um, said that he needed that repaired first. And that's why I had no problem. That was my left. And then the right one I did, I scheduled for the next year and did that one. So that was great. My, and my ankles, I don't anticipate any problems. Um, you know, when you're rehabbing your ankles, you do feel them a little bit, but, um, it's, yeah, they're fine. I always had pretty strong ankles. I used to be a, a roller skater. So, um, oh yeah. Cut out carbs. Yeah. I, that definitely helped me when I did that. Definitely. I still, I still struggle with too many carbs. I probably will my whole life, but luckily, unlike my poor mother, um, I do not have diabetes yet. And I hope to not. Um, that is something that has run in my family. And so I think so far I'm taking it to my death. It is really hard to live with. There's Mickey Mouse earring in the the goodies. Yeah, well, please do um, give yourself credit for your your accomplishments, even if there's more to go. And uh, please do reach out for support too, because I think that makes all the difference. Oh, there's some elephants. Cute. I wonder if we have any elephant lovers in our group of um, vintage peeps. I have, I have a little elephant collection that I love, but I don't really need collections of everything, you know? So, so here's a few more things I can show you from the box. So... Who doesn't love elephants? Well, true. True, true. But these are, and these are miniature ones that I have. Here's a little rose that, um, oh, I got the jewelry lot from Crack and Christine. And I will put her link in the chat if, or if somebody else. Oh, I have Kathy and Simhi that are, let me um, mod some people. I think I know how to do that, do I? I know how to do that. Let's see. If I click on Amy. Bad moderator. Bam. That's easy. Great. Amy, put your link in. I want people to know about you who might not already. Um, and then I'm going to put, oh, thank you, Kathy. You're the sweetest. Yeah, there's um, Crack and Christine's. Um, yeah, it was just $10. It was such a steal. Um, and there's so many goodies in here, like single earrings and, um, Sim here, are you a crafter too? There's, this looks like a belt. Must be a belt. Yeah. Amy does some really fun, um, shop alongs. Sometimes she goes to the bins. I wish I could go with you to the bins. Oh, this is a fun necklace. It still looks functional. It has a barrel screw on. Yeah. Yeah. It took me a long time. Um, it usually does to get me going on crafting and then I'll get going. And then if I have to clean it up for some reason, then I'm slower to get it back out. So I love to just have a space that's 
dedicated to it. Yeah, don't you just love Amy? And she's been doing lives, a few lives. I don't know what your schedule is for those, but those are fun. Um, I, have, I feel like it's not as often as other posts that you do. And um, but she, yeah, she recently went to Washington D.C. and so she travels a little bit and does some um, videos when she goes other places, which is fun. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, not right now. I hope you get two again soon. It's nice. It's very therapeutic for me. Probably it's for you too. So it looks like a nice day today. There's still some snow out on the ground, it looks like. But not recent snow that's from last week. Just hasn't um, melted in all the places yet. Uh, oh, I was going to show you the elephants that I just pulled from the box. Uh, sometimes I feel like I have a little ADHD or something. So this, these are cute. I don't know if I'd wear it as a necklace, but um, I'll definitely put it to good use. They're just, like, they look carved, but they're, I think they're just resin. Wait, let's see if they're exactly alike or not. They are not exactly alike. So let's see. Could they be handmade? Hmm. I don't know. The bottoms of them are all different. They do feel a little lightweight, but if they were carved, then they could still be lightweight. Let's see if I can see how the bottoms are all different. They look different. Um, but geez, would you sit there and carve something like that? I don't know. Anyway, yeah, I have um, a bunch of up here in my, let's see if I can get them out there. Up here, I have a bunch of elephants. Probably can't see unless you zoom in, but um, just little carved elephants, some way whimsy ones, figurines, things like that. And I have birds here. I have some glass birds here. More of those birds that I've kind of collected. Some are my mom's, but like the penguins are my mom's here. I was thinking of taking this penguin, let me show you, putting it in one of the tart pins. I think it might be an old Hagen Reniker. And I can use uh, removable glue dots on the bottom. See how it looks like it has some had some paper there? I can put that in a little tart tin and make a, a little assemblage out of him. I even have these heart-shaped heart tins. And use a glue dot and glue them in and put a few other little guys with them. A tree, bottle brush tree, you know. Put bottle brush trees in anything these days. I got some little tiny ones. I tried um, just finding some out in the wild that I couldn't. So I got these on Amazon little trees. Anyway, yeah, I have um, some cuties up here. Mom had a little collection of penguins as well as the elephants. So those are things that I probably am going to sell. Um, she had cupies and I sold a lot of cupies. But I kept a few. I kept these right here. These are um, Kelvin brands as opposed to Anesco, which made um, the actual O'Neill Cupies, Rose O'Neill Cupies. Yeah, so I kept those two because I think they look cute together. One's not wearing a diaper and one is wearing a diaper. So, um, yeah. Amy, did you post your link? Oh, no. 
Yeah, you did. I see it. I'm glad you did. Please check out Amy Yosa Boho Rescue Treasures. What, one thing I really love about Amy's um, channel is she um, not only, of course, resells her, I, I see it now, sorry, resells her um, found items and rehabs them. She has a you know physical space as well as online. Um, she does her best to you know keep things out of the landfill. And that's something that I am really um, passionate about too. So that's why I say, oh, I really looked for bottle brush trees um, this size, little tiny ones, but um, couldn't find them. So I ended up having to buy them on Amazon. Well, that's because I'm, I'm trying really hard to not buy new things. I'm trying to buy, or I'm trying to use things that are already um, out there because it, of our landfills filling up and barges of trash sent to China and things like that. It's just ridiculous. So if we can all do a little bit more in that realm, that would be great. And so Amy does a really good job of that. And she, she one of my favorite um, videos from Amy is um, when she got a ton of, was it hobnail milk glass from um, the bins and just beautiful stuff that could definitely be used. I don't know why they put it in the bins and not in the store, but um, just, wow, I just couldn't believe it. So here's a bunch of the wine charms that came from the box. These are cute. This has a little shoe and this has princess on it, I think. Or no, that one doesn't say princess. Well, this t-shirt says princess. Yeah, and there's this compact cute, right? Yeah, totally. Uh, we need to use what we have. Um, and I think a lot of us have, even us older folks have, um, who were accustomed to growing up in the 80s and everything was shiny and new. And even before that, um, that you, you just threw things away. Um, you might as well, or we've come around to, to realizing, you know, what's going on and, and we need to um, protect uh, as much as I can. Plus, um, oh, that's great. Plus, not only that, it's um, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun to appreciate the older things, the the vintage, and um, and even the not necessarily vintage, but you know, you can get it for a lower price. Everybody's struggling with the economy right now, so why not get it? Use it, use. You know, one time I was. Um, talking to my dad and granted he has um, Parkinson's and dementia and he had a mild stroke, but he, I said to him something about going to Goodwill and did you know they have shoes there? And I was looking for a pair of slippers for him. A slippers sometimes can be pretty messed up at Goodwill, but sometimes you can find really good, good ones that are barely used. And especially for somebody who doesn't really necessarily care about um, how it looks. So, um, I mean, as far as like brand and stuff like that. So he said, um, why would anybody buy shoes at Goodwill? And I was like, what, dad? You know, that's just sounded so weird to me. And I, got, I came to realize that I think because, you know, he was born at a different time and like he you know maybe thinks that shoes for height maybe for hygienic reasons too like you why would you ever do that it would be gross to wear somebody else's shoes so i just kind of excused it like um you know but but then i ended up buying him some slippers and i told him they're from goodwill and he's like oh these look good yeah and he wore them so <laughs> it's just funny Hi, Tango the cat. Oh, and you're in the UK. I think I saw earlier. I think you mentioned that. That's awesome. I'm in um, Northwest Washington, well, Western Washington, just over the border from Seattle. I lived in Seattle for 25 years and sold my house and moved after my husband passed away in 2019. Yeah, 2019, September. My husband passed away and I sold the house 
during the pandemic and moved up here and um, and my mom passed away about a year later or two years later yeah crazy crazy both had diabetic complications and things like that so I'm making tango in case you didn't see I'm making a little ornament and I like to make them in these little tart tins and we're just chatting and going through this box of um, and somebody complimented me on the organization thank you Simi um, it's just because I'm enjoying them so much and my little Wade whimsies are back here behind me over here also trying to organize and sort through things and you know, I do resell some of my items too. Oh yeah, nice. I didn't know that, Amy. I don't think I knew that you're a cat lover too. That's awesome to know. Yeah, you can resell some of those things for good money or use them yourself, which is awesome. Thank you. Sometimes I wonder if it's a little busy and excessive um, because you know I do live sales. Look, it's all the way up here. I have a little bit of a gallery wall and I'm one of my cats. Then we need to do a little show and tell. So people have been asking me away from this part of my camera. <laughs> Just trying to turn the tripod. See, I have some other fun things there. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've accumulated a lot. Plus I already had so much and I've been unpacking boxes from my mom. This is supposed to be, this shelf is supposed to be my resale shelf, but I do have a couple fairy lamps that I'm not selling. So, yeah. And some other kitties too. <gasps> Two rescues, that's awesome. Oh, no. I hate hearing about what people do, poor kitties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Kathy, something like that. Um, I think my dad has like bought uh, like a golf club at Goodwill. He was okay with that. I took him one time. But yeah, they don't, they don't think of buying clothes. Yeah, I know. I know. Once you see that, Simi, I know. Some of it can be gross, of course. And yeah, but oh, Benji. Wow. This is so fun, by the way, you guys coming and sharing and chatting. I appreciate you so much. Oh, promise to the best life. Yeah. Yes, Bonnie. A little at a time. Once you get going, you'll get excited about it. You know, I don't know if I had moved this from my mom's house just because I had to move some things. Um, I don't know if I would have started all this, but I, I decided to use this. I'm glad I did because it probably is crazy. It's got glass and it's like oak. Um, I started with that. These uh, above here, these came from mom's too. And then um, those shelves are just Ikea shelves that my daughter had and said she didn't want when we moved. And I took them and I wanted to paint them, but I didn't. I just threw them up there. And then the little boxes down below um, got a couple different places. So. Facebook. Oh, nice. I'll have to find you on Facebook. I used to do more things on Facebook. But then over on YouTube more. Angle down so you can see my little workspace. Very small right now, but I'm working on small things. So. There's one of my little doodads. I think I'm finished with this one. I was adding to it last night. I think I'm done with this one. Put a couple little bells on it. The little leaners page. Oh, yes. That's just. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, she has followers. Okay, I'll look that up. 
swallow too. I like pulling those kitty things. And fun animal stuff. Little leaners. We were hoping one of our cats would get internet famous, but it hasn't happened yet. I guess we brought up, gotta post it first. <laughs> That's so cute. I found um, when I was 24, um, I was living with my boyfriend and he went out and took the trash out and said, I think there's a kitten in the, tr in the dumpster. And I went, what? And you left it there? <laughs> so I grabbed a flashlight and I grabbed him and I said, we're going out there. We're getting, we're going to look. And he goes, well, it might be a rat. I don't know. And I said, I don't care. We're going to go look. So we looked in there and yes, there was a Siamese kitten with snow because it snowed and the dumpster was open um, snow on him. And I was like, I pulled him out. It was Christmas Eve too, by the way, or, or maybe 23rd. I'm not sure. Pulled him out. And, uh, this was in Idaho in, uh, Southeastern Idaho, kind of by close to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. So different weather over there than we're used to here. And, um, grabbed him. He was pretty good. He seemed to maybe have like maybe a little, eye goopiness, but um, I took him to the vet this a couple days later, I think, and he was good. And I had him for 17 years, I think, through a couple moves and everything. So he, he had a nice life after that, but I don't know how he got in the dumpster because a little kitten doesn't just fall in a dumpster. There wasn't anything around it that he could have climbed up on. So... I don't know what I don't want to know, but I'm glad I found him when I did. I think the next day was pickup day. I just uh, can't. I just can't. <sighs> so, Gamma, Grandma. Oh, I see. That's cute. I'm so glad. Thanks, Beth. I have a lot of stories these days. <laughs> and my dad talks a lot. And when he's high, so he also has lows too. But um, my dad talks a lot. And sometimes I'm like, oh, dad, okay. You know, or he'll tell somebody a story. And we're like, they didn't ask to hear that story. Now I realize I'm a little bit that way myself. <laughs> so. But I mean, I do have quiet moments, but it's not like, man, I'm depressive. It's not, it's not like that, bipolar. Yeah, there are some cruel, I don't understand it. I don't get it at all. Why would you, why would you, I don't know. I don't know. Does anybody have a, um, not to change the subject because we can talk about everything. Anybody have a craft to do with clothespins? Because, and I know there's the old fashioned clothespins too, that are the pinchy, that are not the spring ones, but um, I have, I am not, but do I seem like it? I, Cause I'm really worried about, I'm not diagnosed, but my dad is. And I've been um, really worried about being that way. You know, he does, um, oh, thanks Beth. Thanks for coming by sweetheart. Um, he, he's really strong. Uh, he gets uh, angry and irritable when he's in his really high um, manic phases and he can't sleep and stuff like that. And then he'll get really low, almost like catatonic. Um, and uh, and kind of like not responsive. I don't have that. I hope I don't. He also has really low blood pressure, and so he falls asleep a lot. Um, it's not narcolepsy in its true form. It's um, it's just he falls asleep a lot, and then we think it's his low blood pressure. Sometimes, sometimes his pulse is like 35. One time, we <laughs> I took him to um, urgent care for something else, and they admitted him to the hospital because of his pulse. Um, but it was just because it look, it gets low. So, I don't know if that's related to being mad depressive or not. But. Oh, here's a fun earring that would be good for, oh, <laughs> 
Yeah. We, do, does anyone have a craft to do it with clothespins? Something to do with them. I, my mom had a bunch of them and I have them here at the house and I have even some really tiny ones too, wooden ones. And I know you can paint them and put things on them, but I kind of wondered if somebody had some creative ideas for those. Yeah, that's what I wanted to know. All right, I'm almost done with this deer one. I need something to cover back here. Um, maybe some Christmas lights. And I have these little strings of Christmas lights that I got from the flea market when I went to the Rose Bowl flea market. And they're just little tiny ones. Maybe I'll glue a couple of those back there. Or like a little sprig of holly would be perfect. I have something small. I also got these at the Rose Bowl flea market, which I love. I don't think they're really like necessarily fancy or anything, but I, I have a, tr a small tree downstairs and I'm going to put them on. But I intended to get them for crafts. They're just plastic, but they look good. I think they're vintage plastic. Hey, how's it going, Mar um, Margie? How's it going, Margie? I'm good. How are you? Are you home? Are you at work? What's going on? I'm going to mod everybody because if you have a channel that you would want to, um, to or links of fun things that you want to link, please do. I'm going to add everybody as moderators so that they can do that. I just met Tango, but I'm going to mod her. I'm going to mod Beth, even though she left. I am really good, Margo. I'm having a little bit of, um, I thought maybe so, because it's because of the time of day. I thought maybe we were still there. Um, I mean, a little bit of a twingy pain here. I think it's just scar tissue. I might need to take more Tylenol. But, um, yeah, a little spasmy thing. Maybe I'll put, would it be too much if I put some of these little, if I put some of these, if I cut them off the string, I put them on the tree. That's not too much, is it? <laughs> uh, again, I'm a more is more instead of less is more type person. Let's see if there's maybe a charm I can put back there. There's a little cross that's cute. Thinking about maybe cutting off these stars. I think I'm going to cut off attach one of these little stars and use it on there too. So it needs more bling. It needs more gold in my opinion. Thank you, Bonnie. Yes, I think it would be cute too. Okay. Well, I'm glad you asked and I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah. I think with chronic pain, um, that, that can happen. Definitely. I have been through some of that. I need to get my clippers out of my jewelry box here. Yeah, I take, um, I don't know, do you take gabapentin or have you taken gabapentin? Because I started taking that because um, it can be an antidepressant too, especially with um, chronic pain. So my, my therapist um, who manages my meds she um, prescribed it and I take it three times a day. I probably should try to cut back at some point. Check with her and see if I should cut back. But um, it's really helped, you know, when you have chronic depression and pain. Um, yeah, it is draining. Even when you aren't really thinking about it, although it's hard to not, um, but you, you, you're not maybe focused on it, you're doing your life, you know, going about your life and, but it's still there. It's still always, it's 
still always there. So yeah, RA is, is so tough, so tough. Ah, is it unusual for me to have to take a pill? Oh. No. Oh, effects are, yeah, I've done that one in the past. I, I don't take effects are now, I don't think. I've taken Cymbalta. Oh, yeah. Oh, stomach couldn't handle it. Oh, okay. That is good to know that it can cause stomach issues because sometimes I don't, my stomach doesn't feel good and, um, and I've had a uh, frequent heartburn recently that I also have to take a prescription for. So I should um, check into the gabapentin. Maybe I need to back off a bit, but it, it did definitely help for quite a while. Okay, I'm going to put this little star right here. Because it's hiding the little thing that I want to hide. Plus it's adding a little bit of glitzy glitter to it. Get off my face. There we go. And I'm not sure about this pom pom. It's not glued in. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. It's a little thing. Yeah, I just decided I've never done this before. I got getting on live and I've been meaning to because I didn't have a lot of content for my channel. Um, so I've been, I was like, I'm going to craft today, so let's get on here. Plus I have a box of jewelry odds and ends, a mystery box that I got from Crafty Christine. So I've been going through that and, and um, kind of showing off. And then people had asked me about my goodies, so I'm showing a little bit of that. And my awesome friends like Amy and Mar uh, Margie and Tango the cat, you know, why not, why not make friends and share our channels with each other. I love that. So I'm growing up my hair, keep messing with it. Uh, I was doing, as you can see, sort of a red um, cover. Not, It wasn't meant to be red. It's supposed to be light blonde because that's the color I used to be naturally to hide my gray. And as you can see, I'm getting more and more gray. And I didn't, just didn't like the look of the color anymore. I was doing the e-salon subscribe box thing and it's pretty but for as long as my hair as long as I like to wear my hair um and the way it looked when it grew out I almost liked it better after a few weeks after doing the color I was like why am I doing this so I, I decided to cancel it and so I'm growing it out and so you can see it's really kind of orangey today and when I've done this in the past, as I've started going gray, I have not liked it. And I've decided that I am feeling too young to look as old as I thought I did with the gray. But I'm trying to change my mind about that because it's my natural color. It's how, how I am. And I don't want to, I mean, I'm, nothing's wrong with anybody coloring their hair. Believe me, I, my mom did it her whole life. It's not. I've been doing it, I don't think um, it matters, but yeah. Do what you want to do is what I say. My grandma used to take her cat for a walk. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, and then I see people like Heather Elizabeth, who I adore, and she's gorgeous, and she has all silver hair. And I'm like, well, maybe, maybe I have enough silver to make it look like that or you know I really admire um, I've seen some really gorgeous ladies with silver hair and I want to see if I can do that see if I can pull it off and the only way to do it is to grow this out and um, of course I could get a color correction if I went and actually spent money at a salon but I'm not sure I'm willing to do that so right now I'm just gonna kind of put it up and hide the hide that part or cut it off I haven't decided so I'm going to get out the E6000. I do have ventilation, Bonnie. I have the, I have the fan on. I do have an air cleaner in here too that I could turn on. And darn it, I've been meaning to grab some 
toothpicks from the kitchen for this purpose, but I didn't, so I'm going to use the back of my um, paintbrush to, to get the glue in there. <gasps> Look who's here! Antique Agenda is here, my gorgeous, gorgeous BFF, whose hair I was just referencing. Speak of the devil. Well, thank you. I really don't even do much makeup today. I just, uh, I just put on a little mascara and a little lip and that's it. I'm trying to embrace, as you know, I was an esthetician. Uh, I still am a licensed esthetician for the last 10 years. And working as one, um, you, I, I used to always tell my clients, do the best with what you have because you can't change genetics. You can't change um, past uh, environmental damage, things that you've done your lifestyle, maybe your lifeguard, you know, you wear sunscreen, but you can't prevent all of the sun damage, depending on what you do, if you're a construction worker or whatever. So um, do the best with what you have was always my motto. And so, but you still, as an esthetician who's selling products and things like that, you do tend to end up being kind of critical of your own looks and, and, um, you know, if I didn't look good and I'm trying to sell a cream to somebody, why would they believe me? If I don't look that great. So, but yeah, I'm getting this line here on my forehead and it's kind of bugging me. You know, I, I still, and then, you know, I'm just kind of vain to start with, but not overly. I'm trying, trying. It's just tough when you get to that you know, age where I've started taking hormones because I get too cranky if I don't. And uh, I hate the hot flashes. I hate them, hate them, hate them. So yeah, this is tough. And, and we need to, we need to band together and talk about these things. So I'm enjoying, thank you for the compliment, Heather. I didn't, if I didn't say that already. Yes. I want to embrace my inner silver minx. I like that. It's definitely better than this color, in my opinion. That's this. This is just the way my hair dyed to this color. I wasn't tr like I said. I wasn't trying. I was trying for just brown. But oh, you're over the hot flashes part. Well, some people say they go on for years and years and years. I put up with it for a couple of years, and they kept saying, "Well, you're still having your cycle, so you're not in menopause yet." But I was having hot flashes, and. and I'm, and I was getting angry, like so irritable. And so when I started taking the estrogen and it's just a really, really tiny amount, it made such a difference. It made such a difference. It's not to say I still don't have my cycle too. That happens every couple months. That's less frequent, which is nice, but sometimes it surprises me. So because <laughs> I don't keep track of it. There's some shells in here that are pretty. Oh, this makes me think of Amy. This is really fun. It's just a fun little, it's a little tangly, but got some shells, kind of a boho look. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's rough. I mean, people can get through it without, um, somebody wired, um, did the wire work on this. Like, well, maybe it's a manufactured piece. I don't know. I guess there are places that sell manufactured or big retailers, re retailers that sell handmade items. That's pretty. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. Well, um, Heather, put a link to your channel. If there's people in here that aren't familiar with you, I'd love for them to get familiar with you. I think you're getting close to a thousand followers. Not that I looked or anything, but I sometimes go to your channel. 
it only lasts for like a minute. Um, yeah, you feel like you're getting overheated. Um, and that can start off really mild. You're just like, oh, it's like too hot in here. And you take your sweater off and you're fine. But, oh, Bonnie, thank you for coming, sweetheart. Thank you. I'll do this again. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, and how I knew it was really hot flashes because I would get, I, along with that, I had these other symptoms that were like PMS, like getting really cranky or um, uh, what else? Well, the cramping, I was having cramping too. That was unreasonable and wasn't associated with a, um, a, a period, you know, it was just like all the time I was feeling crampy. And so that was, that improved too with taking the low dose estrogen. It just took me finally going to see a women's health specialist that could, and she's just like, yeah, you're going to take this and it'll be great. You'll, <laughs> I'm like, oh, really? It's just that easy. <laughs> wow. Well, only eight months. Um, bring those YouTube or those um, Facebook people over. Yay, Heather. Thank you. Yeah. You could, yes. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> and you're like, well, we all have those bad days or whatever it is might be justified, you know, but um, sorry, my, I think it's a little bright window there. When it's dark, when I do my lives, it's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, that's how you know. I mean, it's just a combination of things. Just, maybe just not feeling quite right. But yeah, the hot flash, um, I wasn't quite sure either, but, and you don't necessarily get sweaty. You just kind of get like almost pinprick hot, but I think people are, all people are different with it. So these are cute and wearable, but I don't know if I'll, I'll probably end up doing one of those, um, those 2D, well, I guess you could call it 3D too, but. Um, where you mount the jewelry and make a, a picture like I've seen it in the shape of a cat or um, yeah <laughs> yeah I can see that Italian heritage in you definitely that's probably why you have the beautiful silver hair that's awesome well I'm before I forget let me see my phone and I go on Facebook and find you Cigna wants me to have colon cancer screening. I just had a colonoscopy recently, so I'm good. Okay, going down the rabbit hole with the apps. Or on Facebook. Is it Tango the Cat on Facebook too? Yeah, those cranky Italians, right? I don't see that. I don't I don't believe that I mean. Tango the cat. Oh, I was gonna ask you, Tango. Um we have a local guy called the Cat Luminati. He's in Tacoma, Washington, um, south of me. And he I'm gonna follow you. Yay! Um, he has really awesome TikToks and there you are. Tango the cat. Is that Tango the cat? You. Um, I think he does just TikToks, but he might be on other things. Well, he just walks around his neighborhood. He has a, he had a cat himself. I think he just passed away, but he just walks around. He talks to the cats and and records it and he sometimes picks them up if it's okay with the owner and sometimes brings some treats if it's okay with the owner but he's very um he's very very good no that's not you oh crap okay i'll unfollow that <laughs> what's your um youtube or your facebook 
Well, they've just got to follow her. Let me see if I can unfollow. There we go. Okay. No, oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, Amy, that was that would be good to to check. The two thousand. Yeah, that's thirty six followers. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, if anybody wants to follow me on Facebook, please go ahead. Um, mine is just Leanne Brown. And when my mom passed away, I kind of just unplugged from Facebook. Oh, come on. Because, you see, you can see my name. I put the flowers up when my mom passed away. And, um, I kind of unplugged from Facebook because it was too much of a reminder. So anyway, I um, but if you want to go on there, sometimes I look at it and um, I have a lot of old pictures on there from when I once mentioned that I played roller derby and about 12 years ago and um, I'll look for that. Um, so all my pictures from roller derby are on Facebook. I don't have them anywhere else. So actually there might be some on my cloud or something, but I don't know how to, I'm not, not so good technology wise. So Is it Tango the Cat with a Lion's Tail? No. Which? Okay, Amy's posting her cat's page. Thank you. Nice. Yeah, definitely like Lil Leaner. Tango, if you can post your Facebook link, that would be awesome. I think I see it. Nice. Well, now I'm following Lil Leaner. Yeah, I take, I look at it only occasionally, not um, Facebook notifications because it's uh, just too much. Now maybe I'll get over it someday, but not yet. So, oh, I wanted to show this because I bought this. It didn't have the little hanger on it, but um, it's so weird. It's a pin. Somebody glued a pin back on it, but it's way too heavy. It's some kind of cast metal. It has a mermaid on the bottom. And you see her front like that. And it's a little mirror. And it has like this, um, I don't know if these are all found objects. It kind of looks like it because it has like drilled holes, like maybe those were earrings and then they glued these other pearl things on there. It's really kind of pretty. The, the, I know. <laughs> um, the mermaid, it seems to be attached solidly to this other piece that I don't know where this piece came from originally, like what its function was before it was assembled into this thing. And then I put this on because I was thinking I would hang it from, I ended up doing a mermaid tree. Um, I have a blue lighted tree and I had all these mermaid napkin rings that are ceramic. And I decided those would look cute on this tree with some seahorses. I had some seahorse um, ornaments and some shells. Um, so I was going to put this on the tree with that. Isn't that, it's just an in, interesting piece. And like I said, it's fairly heavy, heavier than I would want to use as a um, thing, as a pin back. So yeah, I played roller derby uh, for a few years because my knees were arthritic at the time. Um, but I still played. 
not very well because of that. <laughs> but um, it was fun. I was on the Pink Pistols and was with Jet City Roller Girls, um, who's a local, a local team. They're still going. They stopped for a while during the pandemic, as a lot of those teams did. But we, um, they got going again, and I'll probably go watch them one of these days. It was fun. It was a great way to get exercise. A great way to, um, you know, fun, fun, fun team sport. Great way to make friends. Um, have sort of a social network. We even went to, um, my team went to LA one time uh, on a road trip to play Angel City. And so, yeah, it's fun. So I don't know what this looks like, what it was originally. Maybe it was just a mirror, like a little compact mirror that you would put in your purse. And it had a, um, had a mermaid on it. And then maybe they, they put the the other little pieces on it trying to do something with it because i think even these bottom things are glued on here so i haven't looked to see whoops who else is on right now maybe i should sign off one of these day one of these times say oh yeah trisha's on right now Sandy and Otto. That's right. She goes on. She's probably been on an hour. So. It's almost fun to watch her channel. Yeah. So I have a live sale every Thursday. Sexy pink. Oh, did you look at the... Um, Yes, you mean the one that is my the uniform that says pink pistols? Yes, I do have my uniform still and the little booty shorts that go with it. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yep, I mean, maybe one day I'll get it out for you. Probably would be able to squeeze in it still. Stretchy after all. Yeah, so I did that later in life. I mean, I, I was like almost 40 when I played. And there are people older than me, too. I mean, people from all walks of life. We had um, people that were scientists, physical therapists, librarians. Um, and then their moms like me. I was a soccer mom at the time, driving my kids to soccer and softball and basketball games. So, yeah, it was really fun. I love roller skating. It, it, it's very therapeutic for me. It puts me on another plane almost. Um, and so I'd started roller skating for exercise and fun. And then I met a few, um, <laughs> things. I met a few people from the league at some open, you know, skates, you know, you go and, and whoever wants to show up shows up and they were there, you know, just practicing and working on their skills, but also just having fun. And, um, <laughs> oh, that's nice. Thank you for putting the link in. And um, so I met them. They're like, you should come to this practice squad that we have called um, Fresh Meat. And I was like, oh, well, I don't know. You know, I don't even know how to cross over. I can't skate backwards. I don't know. I don't know what I'd be doing there. But they're like, yeah, come on. And so I went um, to this weekly um practice squad. And then some of the people were associated with roller derby um, teams and some were not. And um, they, we worked on different skills, different drills and things like that. And it was really, really fun. And I quickly gained skills that I had not had before. So I had, um, I learned how to cross over. I learned how to skate backwards. I learned a lot of different things. And then um, I don't know, I just, Felt like okay, I need to take this to another level, so I tried out for for the team, and which was quite a process. Uh, it was not, you know, several several week months actually of um, training and boot camp and stuff like that that you have to go through to to join the league. So um, it was quite a process, but 
and I didn't do it the first time. I didn't make it the first time on a team. So I had to do it a second time. And I thought, well, if this doesn't teach me perseverance, I don't know what will, <laughs> because, you know, that could have, I could have stopped right there. But I, I went a second time, me and somebody else too, who was there didn't make it the first time. So I was happy to have her along. It wasn't just me. That, Cause I thought as I was going, you know, and I was 39 or something like that, as I was going through it a second time, I'm like, am I doing this the right way? Am I, is this the right thing for me? Maybe I should just quit. And, um, and I just had a lot of encouragement and I was just benefiting so much just from the camaraderie and everything that, that I, um, that I just kept doing it. Uh, it was around 2011 when I was playing 2010, 2009, something like that. In the nineties, I was, I got married and had my kids. So I got married in 95 and my kids were 96 and 98. I really like how the star looks there. You can see it right by the, kind of gives a little bit more of a focus to the little guy there. And I just put, you know, green felt for the background, sort of like, you know, implying a forest. Yeah, yeah, back in the day, um, they had the bank tracks and yeah, I, we, I actually played with, at Jet City. I played with a gal whose mom was at like in L.A. Um, back in the day, like in the 60s and 70s, played for one of those teams that was televised and on the bank track. And um, when we went to L.A., actually, we went to that bank track that's still there. Um, it's probably been refurbished over the years, but it's an indoor um, track that they would have done they would have tele telecast from there. So that was super fun, but I played on a flat track. Um, and that's what was popular at the time that I was skating. So, but there were, there was a bank track league that started up after I joined um, Jet City flat track. There was a bank track team league that started up and um, they played at one of the big arenas around here. And, um, it was just a lot of work being involved with that league was so fun, but there was like um, committees that you had to be involved with because we were fundraising all the time. You have to pay dues to, to play, pay to play. Um, and the fundraising helped keep that cost down, which was great. But, and then we charged for ticket sales. It was really great entertainment. Yeah. Skating is one of those things that you, if you start and you probably young, and you kind of get comfortable with it, you can end up going farther and farther um, with it. And the first hour or maybe half an hour after I put on skates, you know, I'm a little bit wobbly, but then I start, start getting, getting going. Little tankers. Is that your link? Let me see. Let me see. No, that didn't take me anywhere. again. A link may be broken or the page may have been removed. Mm -hmm. Oh, in Pasadena? Yeah, a lot. Um, oh, in Oregon. That would be so cool. I should look when I go to see my daughter again in LA, I need to look her up, look up the um, skating rinks in the area. Cause yeah, a lot of them closed for a while, but then roller derby got going again around 2010. And then um, a lot of the skate rinks were kind of taken over by some of the derby people. Cause we needed more places to skate, honestly. Um, and then kind of fixed up and there was a renewed, interest in skating. So yeah, the Venice Boardwalk, I could go and watch them. That'd be fun. I don't think I would do it. Maybe I definitely have to wear my knee pads. Um, if I was going to skate on concrete along with other people, because, you know, 
just take somebody falling in front of you and then you go down too. One time I was skating outside and this was when I was about to, right before I was going to go to boot camp for, um, for Derby to get on a team. And I was skating outside with a friend on asphalt, on this asphalt walkway, but there are a lot of trees and there was a pine cone, uh, more than one pine cone, but I happened to hit it and I went f flying forward and, um, I'm, luckily all my skin was intact. I had my wrist guards on and everything, but I had put my phone in my bra, <laughs> which I do not recommend you do. And um, I'd fallen on it, fell on it hard. And um, I had either a bruised or broken rib for quite a while. And that was during the first um, tryouts that I went to. So I was pretty bruised and that didn't help. Um, so watch out for pine cones when you're skating outside. Um, yeah. So when I go see my daughter in LA, I'm gonna look for a rink because that might be fun. Bring my bring my skates because I haven't been on skates since my I did uh, after my first knee replacement. I did go get on skates, but yeah, I can do it again. I asked my surgeon. I said, "Can I roller skate?" And he said, "Yeah, but wear knee pads." So I'm going to do it. Culver City Ice Rink. Oh, cool. So Heather, since you're here and you're chatty, um, I'm thinking about March. I'm thinking about Colorado. I'm thinking about if I want to make it a road trip or if I want to fly. Because the benefit of the road trip is I can have my car and I can drive around to different places, which I do like to do. Um, but if I fly, obviously it'll take less time because it'll take me a couple days to get there. If I drive, I have had, you know, gone on long road trips, you know, Southern California and Eastern Idaho and, but not, not super long. I think that would be my longest road trip if I drove to Colorado from here. Oh no, no, never mind. We'll find you. We'll find you, Tango the cat. No worries, you tried. Oh my gosh, that would be so amazing. Well, if I brought John with me, um, which I'm probably gonna do because if he, well, if he can get, he works from home. He can take his work with him sometimes, uh, as long as there's Wi-Fi all the time. Call for ice rink. Oh yeah, Culver City, of course. Yeah, we went through there. Yes. I wonder if it's still there. We should Google it. It probably is. Culver City. Ice. Now, when I've gone ice skating before, it has not been that as easy for me as it has been to roller skate. So there's Silverback Skate in LA. Oh, that's a skate shop. That's a nice skating rink. There's Toyota Sports Performance Center. There's, this is just the Google search. Even though I typed in Culver City Ice Rink. Is it still open? It's 2004. Memories of Culver Ice Arena, which closed after 52 years. Bomber. It's an LA Weekly from 2014. Will it rise again? Maybe it's risen again in a different article. Let's see. Reviews on top 10 skating. In LA. Pickwick Ice, Pasadena Ice Skating Center, Ellie King's Holiday Ice, Moon Light Rollerway, Holiday Ice Race. My um, late husband used to write a newsletter about the LA Kings and he hung out with the team a little bit back in the day. 
Yeah. So that's the thing. Like I, I, I hate to, I probably would want to do like an Airbnb or something to see, but that's what I'm thinking about. Um, cause I've promised myself that every few months I'm going to go on a little trip. So little tinkers. Well, let me try again. It didn't work for me. Oh, there it is. It worked. Same link that you put up before worked for me. Maybe it was on my awesome. And it says Facebook auction page. Should I click on that? That's so cute. It's so good to know that, um, you know, in other countries and other places, they're helping there. I liked the follow us on Facebook thing. There was a follow us on Facebook on the contact us. So there we go. I think that worked. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Um, because yeah, I mean, I, I would hope that people are trying to help, um, the overpopulation of these pets that are, that don't have homes and need care. So we're not neglecting them. What else? What else? Let's put on some um, ornaments on the tree, shall we? Yeah, we'll talk more, Heather. I really want to do that um, that trip. And then Heather's on my channel. Heather Elizabeth's on my channel next week, next Thursday, the 15th. Um, she will be with me and Sabrina. Yeah, I think I'm doing doing it on my channel and not hers. I just had to think for a second. And we're going to do our little sale and chat. Usually have some really cute vintage items. Heather finds, Heather Elizabeth finds really great items that are very different and they somewhat argue better than what I have. Um, <laughs> you know, we all have our different items. I really love her, um, her eye for style and decorating and the Victorian sort of leanings of what she, what she has in her own decor in her house. And then she does some shop alongs, which are really fun and, um, are set to some music, which is very relaxing and I appreciate. So she's going to be with us. Um, I'm not sure who's going to be with us tomorrow. I think we had a couple um, invitations out there. Uh, it's going to be on my channel at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. That's our weekly sale with Simon Says Let's Make a Deal, Sabrina. And um, she also has some really good vintage items that are different than what I have sometimes. Some are, some are similar. We really like each other's things and we commonly purchase each other's items. So we try to let, um, you know, our audience have first pick. But uh, every once in a while, if there's not an audience or something, oh, yeah, please, <laughs> please do listen if you'd like while you do other things. That's not a very fun task, but uh, good for you for getting it done because we have a, a cat who has to have eye, um, ear drops every couple weeks because her ears get so built up with stuff. And she, she of course, hates it um, when we touch her ears, but we tell her it's for her own good and do it anyway. I'm at E6000, out. Yeah, we used to have a pug that um, they have a terrible time with ears and yeast and stuff in their ears. So um, it's really good to keep on top of that because their life is a lot better, more comfortable, and yours is more comfortable when they're not scratching all the time. So. Okay. I might be overdoing the, the little lights in the tree. I have three in there now.
I don't know. I like it. Whatever. I'm going to put one more. One more. I kind of was trying to fill a little bear spot. And then there was another bear spot. And then, then I needed to put more in there. There we go. Oh, nice, Tango. So glad you found, we found each other. Appreciate you and all you do for the kitties in your area. Bye, Amy. Back to work, huh? Slave, slave to the, to work. Gotta do it. Well, enjoy. Thank you so much for coming by, everybody. That's a little bit more red. Yeah, I think I might be done with this one. Maybe a little bit more. Should I add a touch of pink? I can do that. I do like pink. Yeah, the deer is so cute. It's the only one I have, unfortunately. I had another deer, it was a different shape, but um, that ornament sold in my last live. So I think I'll probably bring a couple of these to the live tomorrow. I have three, I do a choice. Let's see if I get any others done. Well, I realized that I didn't eat lunch. And it's two o'clock, so I should probably get off and do that. And I, I think this was fun. I think this was successful. I think I'm going to do it again sometime. Thank you, everybody, for coming. And um, I'll see you out there in the chats. I hope you'll join us for our live sales when you can. And thanks so much, everyone.